something massive is about to happen. Coming from KT, Texas, to you all and your families all over the world. The Redeemed Christian Church of God of the King's Palace, KT, Texas, is 18. We invite you and your household to join us for the celebration of the 18th year anniversary of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the King's Palace, KT, Texas. Theme, Multiply. Starting from Friday, April 19th to Sunday, April 28th, 2024, come and experience divine multiplication in the most beautiful way you have never seen. Free anniversary events begins with anniversary annual sport competition outreach. Friday, April 19th at 6 p.m. CST shall feature a massive anniversary opening ceremony to declare the 18th anniversary opening featuring ribbon cotton celebration, keynote address, vision recap, fun field outdoor family events, and the anniversary sports heat qualifiers and semifinals for the track and field games. Saturday, April 20th at 1 p.m. CST shall feature qualifiers and semifinals for soccer, indoor games such as ping pong, aka table tennis, basketball, volleyball, badminton, and several other inter-house sport events. Main anniversary begins on Sunday, April 21st at 8.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. with a massive pre-18 anniversary rally featuring all the TKP houses in their diverse colors and celebration heralding a week long of Thanksgiving, fun, outreach, and passion for multiplication. Our anniversary yearly features the most coveted 4D Crown Annual Talent Hunt and outreach competition in three domains, music, academia, creative and theater arts featuring live stage ministrations, animation and comics, reading challenge, spoken words, short skits, music on the spot, solo music, academic bible and TKP trivia, debate and so on. This year, our 4D crown shall be taking a new turn. Sunday, April 21st, will open our 4D crown and our talent hunt with creative and theater arts by 6 p.m., followed by the 4D crown academic competition on Monday, April 22nd by 6 p.m. Because Tuesday, April 23rd actually marks the 18th birthday of our church, TKP, we shall feature 18 hours of member testimony day and non-stop testimonies of God's faithfulness from members of TKP, past and present, and their families running on our YouTube platform virtually from 12.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. The last 30 minutes of the member testimony day will take place physically in the auditorium with celebration and dancing, cutting of anniversary cake and many more, leading us to the 4D Crown Music Competition starting by 7pm. Wednesday, April 24th shall feature a new and creative virtual 4D Crown engagement and virtual church celebration featuring all the virtual part of 4D Crown and a celebration of our virtual members and church starting at 6.30pm. For each of the days of 4D Crown, join our Rice TV team and represent Representatives from each house fellowships in a pre-event fun field 30 minute scan down show on Arise TV, which starts at 6.30 p.m. CST daily. You will laugh and you'll be lifted. Thursday, April 25th, will feature a special virtual corporate testimony night hangout with our senior pastors chronicling the faithfulness of God open TKP for 18 years, streaming live from 7 p.m. CST. Friday, the 26th of April, features the annual anniversary praise night featuring special ministrations by Tunde Lemeru. Jesu Tomi Ulufua, Ronke Adesokon, Rati and Wena, and the Kingdom Voices, featuring the Kingdom Seed Choir, the Kingdom Light Choir, and the prestigious TKP Music Academy. Saturday, April 27th, is a day of fun field outreach events for the whole family, featuring community mega outreaches. This day shall feature four outreaches in one. One, free community food distribution starting at 10 a.m. Two, free virtual community immigration consultation outreach via Zoom starting at 10 a.m. Three, community health Health and Wellness Promotion Outreach starting at 10 a.m. 4. TKP Business Trade Show for all entrepreneurs, business owners and professionals starting at 12 p.m. Then, followed by the grand finale of the anniversary inter-house sports competition parade, both inspection and awards starting at 12 p.m. CST. Sunday, April 28th is the grand finale featuring our annual Thanksgiving and community awards in two services 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Power of Power and 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. from Glow to glory. Host pastors, pastors Tunde and Shadi Badru, venue the redeemed Christian Church of God, the King's Palace, KTTX Campus 5371 East 5th Street, KTTX 77493. All events shall be streamed live on the King's Palace YouTube channel, King's Palace TV, and on our Facebook and Instagram. For more information, call 2813-917-224 or visit www.rccgthekingspalace.org. Invite all your household and friends to come and meet with the God that multiplies his blessing over his children beyond your generation to your future generation.
Welcome to the future with TKP Drama and Film Ministry Annual Event, the Summer Virtual Animation and Artificial Intelligence Bootcamp 2024. Open for ambitious minds from 7th grade and above, including adults and 2nd to 6th graders. This is where your digital dreams take flight. From Tuesday, May 28th to Saturday, June 1st, 2024, the training is in two batches. First batch features children from 2nd to 6th graders from Tuesday, May 28th to Wednesday, May 29th. The second batch will feature 7th grade and above. From Thursday, May 30th to Friday, May 31st, the grand finale will feature a display of final projects and virtual gradual ceremony for just a registration fee of $30 or 45000 Naira for Nigerian students. You'll step into a world crafted by industry experts. Dive into the depths of creativity with Joshua Mike Bamiloye, who will guide you through the magic of animation and comics. Then, explore the limitless possibilities of artificial intelligence with Rex Mwakama ready to unveil the secrets of AI tailored to your age group. Host is no other than Tolu Abodome. This bootcamp is more than a learning experience. It's a transformative event that has garnered countless testimonies over the years. And now, it's your turn to be a part of this success story. It isn't just a class. It's a gateway to advantages of AI and animation in our world today. You'll discover how these technologies transform life, work, and ministry, all from the comfort of your home. Payment is hassle-free. Choose from online the TKP mobile app, Zelle, Cash App, or GT Bank for our friends abroad. Remember, upload your proof of payment to secure your spot. And if you're in need, scholarships are available. Write to us at tkpdramaandfilms at gmail.com for a chance to join this tech odyssey. Ready to create your own testimony? Learn from the best. Unleash your potential at the Summer Virtual Animation and AI Bootcamp. The future to harness your potential and destiny is waiting to be animated. Sign up today. Your journey into animation and artificial intelligence starts now. We're Stories come to life and technology meets talent to bring the best of God into life. Some virtual and artificial intelligence podcast.
failing. Doesn't matter what the situation looks like, he is true to his word. The keeper of covenant. The Lord over all creation. The almighty. The almighty. The almighty. 
the one who gives us opportunities to testify. We worship your majesty tonight. We are grateful that we belong to you, Jesus. We're grateful for the opportunity to come before you at all times, to learn at your feet, to be empowered by you, to do life with you, Lord. Faithful God, faithful God, faithful God. I just want us to appreciate God tonight. Begin to recount his goodness, his wonders, his miracles, the way he saw you through tight corners. Let's give him glory. Let's give him glory. Let your heart be filled with appreciation for the King of Kings, the Lord of all, the great I am, the wonder walking God, the miracle worker, everlasting Father, omnipresent God, omnipotent God, God of all creation. We bow before you tonight. We exalt your holy name. We declare that we don't need any other God, no matter what we face. You are more more than enough. You are the much more God. The one to whom all flesh come and no one leaves you empty handed. You are great and mighty. You can do all things. You can do anything. Hallowed be your name forever. Hallowed be your name forever. Hallowed be your name forever. We come to testify of who you are today. You are holy. You are mighty. You are perfect. You rule from generation to generation. You cannot be questioned you are sovereign. You are the all in all. El Shaddai, Adonai, Yahweh, I am that I am. We exalt you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Father, we exalt you tonight. Have your way, O oh Lord, tonight. Empower us, O oh God, to stand like David before any Goliath and declare the things that you have done in time past. And we will conquer today. We will conquer tomorrow because you are carrying us. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, our Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have worshipped. We serve the King of kings, the Lord of all. The Lord of all, the ruler in the heavens, the ruler everywhere. Let's give him a shout of hallelujah. 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 Amen. Please, let's take our seats. Praise the Lord. You know, we, um, we're still going to talk on the power of testimony tonight. This will be part two. Uh, under the theme, Multiply. We're still... Uh, taking the same scripture as we did last week, Acts 4, 13 to 22. But throughout the course of this week, this song never left my heart. And only today I realized why God laid that song on my heart. It's a song in my language, but I tried to translate it to English. Media, please, if you could project the last slide. It says you can do once again what you've done in time past. The, the, the miracles of the days of old, the miracles and the wonders of years gone by. Lord, you can do once again more than all you've done in time past. I will sing that song and then we'll go into tonight. Tonight is not going to be too different from yesterday. But I think God really wants to encourage us to stand in the face of battle and use the words of our testimony to overcome, as the scripture says. The song goes, You can do once again more than all you've done in time past. You can do once again more than all you've done in time past. Miracles of the days of old, the wonders of years gone by, Lord. You can do once again more than all you've done in time past. Our God is a God who can do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever think or imagine according to his power that works in us. Praise the Lord. He will do once again what he's done in time past in the name of Jesus. 
There are testimonies that we have listened to from others or something that he has done in your own life before. He will yet repeat again to the glory of his name and to the shame of the enemy, to the grief of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I'm very excited tonight. And I know that God will, he will surpass our expectations in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's read our text again. Now we'll just do a quick recap of all that we did last week. And then we'll go into the little that, you know, the Lord will add on to last week for us today. Acts 4, 13 to 22. Acts 4, 13 to 22. We're going to read King James Version like we did last week. Let's read it together. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread, it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the, in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So, when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shewed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, so we've gone through the scripture again tonight and we've seen how the testimony was restricted you know not restricted was uh, opposed resisted by the Sanhedrin the council of uh, Pharisees and all that but even the resistance could not stop the spread of what the Lord has done no matter how much the enemy resists the testimony of God in your life and mine, it will not be stopped. In the mighty name of Jesus, it will spread with, as the resistance increases, so shall the spread widen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So let's look again at this scripture uh, from the beginning, real quick, and then we will go into the power of testimony and what more can we say testimonies can do. So first of all, we saw that in that uh, scripture, the testimony of this man was attacked. The Pharisees did not want anybody else to hear more than the people that had heard. But there was nothing they could do. The testimony kept, you know, spreading. Everybody kept hearing. And many more people were drawn to Christ. Praise the Lord. And it clearly tells us that whenever we have a testimony to share and something keeps saying, not yet, don't share yet, or don't even share at all, just know that that is not the spirit of God. That is the enemy trying to resist the testimony, trying to hinder the goodness and the manifest works of the Lord from being proclaimed all over the earth. Praise the Lord. So we must never yield to such temptations to keep quiet about what God is doing or what God has done in our lives for whatever reason. For whatever reason. We must continue to testify. Remember the, the, the scripture that we uh, looked at last week. 
that says that um, the testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. As we continue to share the testimony of Christ, the testimony multiplies. The testimony reproduces itself like we uh, shared last week. Praise the Lord. So no matter the opposition, no matter the gang up, let us keep sharing the goodness of the Lord. Even when you don't know what to say, just share what God has done in your life. And the Lord will breathe upon it and use it to minister to the hearers in the name of Jesus Christ. So we look at, um, we define testimony as, you know, what is spoken, what is written, what has been shared about the goodness of the Lord unto us. And we looked at a few scriptures last week. This week we will still look at two or three scriptures that really minister to me and particularly talks about overcoming with testimony and losing when we don't share testimonies. So let's look at Psalm 78. We're going to read from verses 1 to 11. Psalms 78. We're still reading King James Version tonight. Psalm 78, verse 1 to 11. Can we read it together, please? Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law and forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. Praise the Lord. This scripture is really going to, we're going to dwell on it a little bit tonight because it kept emphasizing um, one or two things, and that's where my questions will come from. Having read the scripture together, can we share what comes to your heart as we were reading? It starts with an instruction, a warning. Give ear, O oh my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. He says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which you have heard and known, because your fathers have told you. There, there's a lot to even pick from verse 1 to 3, which I just read. So can we go to the microphone? What jumps at you as you read this scripture? With regards to testimonies, the power of testimony, and multiplication. The power of testimony and multiplication. Okay. First, it says, our fathers have told us. It means that we must pass the testimony of God's greatness, God's wonders, from generation to generation. We cannot be quiet in our families, sharing what the Lord has done. Not the day that you come out in church to share testimony, your children be asking, when did that happen? The testimony of what God has done must be passed on to generations. Why should we do that? Why should we do that? Pastor Buki, why should we do that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I was looking at the uh, Psalm 78 that we read, and um, <coughs> verse, um, verse 5 of it, no, verse 7, it says, in that way, every generation will set its hope in God and not forget his wonderful works, but keep his commandments. I, th I think uh, that's the answer to it. Why do we share testimonies into our children? Why do we tell um, our children? Why do we tell families? Why do we tell other people? So that people will have the hope in this God, this one and true God. Because other people can go to other places. People can go to other places, go to look for solutions, have shortcuts, but there's always a repercussion. The devil does not give you anything for free, but we have a God that has all the power, a God that is able to do all things, a God that can lift and demolish, a God that can create and reclaim. And so when we share testimonies, especially with our children, it builds their hope in God. It builds their faith and their trust in God and help them to grow and to pass it also on to their children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. There's more. Thank you very much. It builds hope and causes our generation not to forget the commandments of the Lord. Yes, Victor. Yeah, um, I'm building on what Auntie Bookie just said, that like when, when we share testimonies, it encourages others to continue to obey God. And of course, we know when we obey God, then we live longer, we multiply. Thank you. When we obey God, we multiply. We don't remain, we, we are not stagnant. We are not little when we obey God. Because when we obey God, he breathes on whatever instruction he's given us and it grows. And many more lives are touched. Yes. There's still something that I want us to talk about in verse 4. Brother Fen, verse 4, I mean, you can pick your verse, but... So I'm saying, okay, go ahead, ma. Sorry, I didn't see. No, go ahead. You're coming. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, um, we need to share testimonies with our children because um, we, do, we, we want to let them know that parents are not superhuman. They're not super beings, you know, because children tend to see, particularly when they are growing up, that my dad can do this, my dad can do that, you know, and that is more like giving glory to ourselves. We need to let them know that there's a superior being that is helping dad and helping mom so that when they get to that stage as well, they will know that their own doing is not by their power. And also that helps to connect them to, to the main source. You know, when a child comes to you that I need this and you let the child know that, you also pray because as mommy is going to pray, you pray because you need, the, you need the item. So tell God to give mommy the money, you know, and so they look up to God and they, you know, it helps them to give, uh, to give them good foundation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very true. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I think also from that verse 4, if we tell the testimonies to our children and they tell to their children and they tell to their children, we will not forget the things the Lord had done. And most of us, even concerning our families, um, my husband always says that I know my story to my great, great, great grandparents because my daddy tells us about it. I, I met somebody here on, Pastor, what day? The day we had um, Indian Fellowship. And as soon as he mentioned a name that they are from this place, we began to connect because I knew, I said, my great, great grandmother was the wife of the, of the, uh, it's from the royal family, like the, the oba of the place. So, why? Because my dad always tells us the story. So, if we tell our children about what God did, the reason we are could read the Bible now is because they, some of the people that were witnesses told the people that were there, they saw the wonders of God. They said, oh, this God parted the Red Sea, and we are all learning it. We are all, 
now we are telling our children, today we did not see it, we were not from that generation, but we still see, uh, we still hear it over and over again. So there's power in telling, even concerning the church, this church, our children can never forget that this church was built in 18 years now, because they know every anniversary, we tell them about the church, about uh, what the Lord is doing in the church. So they will forget, they'll be looking forward to every anniversary. So it's very, very important that we pass the button on to our children and never let them forget where we are coming from. Thank mm. you very much. Go ahead, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I don't do what as Calabar can come in and say. You know, when we will share our testimonies with um, the children, they know that it's not because we are hardworking or it's because of what we do that we, we are able to have or provide to them what they have or what we have, they'll know that it's God who is providing it. For instance, there was something that my son needed um, for his birthday, and he didn't tell us. He prayed for it, and when he went to school, for some reason, one of his friends gave it to him. So while we were praying at night, he shared his testimony that he thanked God because he needed it for his birthday, and God provided it for him. He could have come to us because he knew he would give it to him. But he prayed to God knowing that God is the mighty provider. And God didn't use you to give it to him. He used his friend. Proves to the boy that God hears me. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. Praise the Lord. I think that in my own opinion, um, when we share testimony with our children, we are acknowledging the fact that there's a God who answers prayers. Yeah. And we are appreciating him for the good things he has done. Yeah. And our children are going to profit as we are giving their own testimonies to others. Thank you very much. Yes, God thank you. Uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, Looking at the text that we our text for today in the book of Acts, the first thing I will, before going to um, the passage uh, that we we read just now, the book of Psalms, um, they first recognized that the apostles had been with Jesus. That in itself is a testimony. Scripture says, "Christ in me, the hope of glory." They knew they had been with Christ, so that was the starting point. Even before the Acknowledging the testimony, they knew these people had been with Christ. So I want to take it from the perspective of us as parents, as believers, being custodians of what God has done and who God is. I think passing down to our children, more importantly than telling them the deeds of God, it's also letting them know who God is. And the best way we can show that is through our lives. We ourselves are the testimonies. Our work with God is a testimony that will stand the test of time. So the question is, okay, for the, the scripture that we read in the book of um, uh, Psalm 78, you mentioned verse 4, but I want to digress a bit to verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. He established a precept a way of doing things. And that can, could only come from us exemplifying who God is in the lives of our children. When they see that, that in itself is a testimony because they will, they will be bound, let me use that word, or rather they will be compelled to toe the line, to follow the line. And that is a bigger legacy that any parent could give a child. That's the perspective I'm coming from. Praise Thank God. you very much. Very true. Lord. Hallelujah. I think uh, when we give testimonies to our children, it will raise their spiritual life. Honestly, I will testify of one thing that happened to me. In my youth days, I think I studied in the University of uh, Moscow Institute of Architecture. My father was a farmer. I didn't know anybody. I was actually thinking, how will I actually go to university to call the story short? Honestly, in the whole Western state, that time, I didn't know anybody. He gave me the scholarship. I had the scholarship in the Baden Polytechnic without knowing anybody. But I shared this testimony for people, for my children. 
For instance, if you know, I'm a daddy to me at an me, when I went to do my professional exams, people who studied the University of Moscow Institute of Architecture, they didn't recognize them. But I told them what God did for me. I didn't know anything. Then, when I said it raises their spiritual life like this, he started praying. Ah, what God did for my dad, he must do it for me. I remember in Queen's College that time in Lagos, it was very difficult for people to enter. We started praying. That testimony that Daddy showed when he was doing his professional exams, God will actually do it for me. Honestly, instead of begging anybody, Nye came in on marriage to Queen's wow. College. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's the essence of actually praying and actually letting your children to know what, uh, what God has done for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, sir. Praise God. I also want to add that um, the reason why we need to share the testimonies of God with our children is because if we don't, the world is full of negative news. You turn on the TV, you see breaking news, your heart is breaking with the breaking news. Mm -hmm. You go to school, you go to work, everybody is saying negative things. But when they come home, we must make it a duty to tell them that God is faithful. He's a faithful God. Mm. And we do that by sharing stories. And I really thank God for all the stories that Pastor usually shares when he teaches. Those stories are doing marvelous things. And if we make it a point of duty to share with our children, especially children teachers, we must share the testimonies of what God has done in the Bible what God is doing in our lives, and um, I, I just want to share a testimony. At work, sometimes last week, I was discussing with one of my colleagues who has been married for a, uh, a little time, but no babies. So I told her, she's, so I asked her, are you going to go further, like go do masters or something? She said, no, I want to settle down and check what is going on with me, why I'm not having babies. So that caught my interest, so I told her what is going on. So she shared that she had five birds. And that really kicked, I was really excited to talk to her because when I was pregnant with my first child, five, I had five birds. And you know, some of us know the testimony. The doctors painted a lot of things that could happen, that the baby would not grow. As the five bird is growing, baby will be, will be uh, stunted in growth. But with the glory of God, how God did it, we, we just want to thank God. Because the baby grew, very big baby, and not just him. I had three other children after the first one. So I shared that testimony with the lady, and I, I could see that she was excited. And I told her that whatever the doctors have said, whose report would you believe? So that, I believe, planted a hope in her, and I'm believing God that God would do mighty things Amen. through that. Amen. Amen. That testimony will be reproduced in her life in the name of Jesus. So this is very, very crucial. This is the point that really stayed on my heart today, that we need to create a culture. Because all the things that is culture in our various uh, villages and cities and towns where we come from, is because they kept repeating it to the forthcoming generation, forthcoming generation, next generation. That's the same thing. We need to create a culture of letting our children know, like Brother Femi said, two things. Who God is, the testimony of God himself through our lives, and all that he is able to do, all the things that he has done in our own lives, all that we have heard. We must keep passing it on from generation to generation. More than anything else, that, you know, keeps the, the family in Christ. That keeps the children in Christ. When they come against their own opposition as they are growing up, they remember, you know, what their daddies told them. I know that my dad, because he was a building contractor, even when he's bidding for contracts and we are doing a prayer in the night or in the morning, he's going to say, I'm building, I'm bidding for this and this. Pray, oh, pray, oh. To the point that there was a contract that he told us that this is big, but he's feeling like he shouldn't take it as if he shouldn't take it, as if the Lord does not want him to take it. 
but this is big that we should pray. We should pray. And truly, for whatever reason, when he took that contract, he paid with his money. So he left. So both my dad is, he won't just tell you the positive. He tells you so that you also can learn from it. So it is important that we build a culture in order for our generation to remain in the Lord. Let them know. Let them know what's going on. Good or bad. Where we err a little, let them know. Where the Lord helped us, let them know. So that we have a culture of passing it on. Passing, because the children will do more what they see us do than what we say do. Praise the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. When you mentioned culture, there's a, I have a burden though, and part of the burden is um, no matter what is going on around us, our children should know our value and what we believe in. We cannot, because uh, they are in a, a system, then begin to allow things that are not in value to you as a child of God, even as from your own personal culture. And I will also say that in this uh, environment, not just in America, everywhere now, people are not passing that value, that culture, that biblical culture, that um, cultural value system. You may not even be, even from your own uh, from where we come from, there, there are values, things that we need to pass. We should not be shy to pass it on to our children and don't let them just be. And that is very, very, it's, it's been a burden to my heart. And sometimes I hear some people from my, my community speaking American English to their children. I'm wondering what kind of because when the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, they still sp spoke their language. How did they know who were Israelites? Because they retained their culture. So our culture could be biblical culture. We need to let the children continue in that culture. They cannot just go out of that culture. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense. Yeah, and also before I go, another thing I was meditating on today is that no matter, I don't know who this is for, no matter what you are going through, God is in control. Your testimony is to be bigger. The reason why it keeps delaying or you think God is not there is because God wants it to be announced. Amen. And I remember when we were waiting, when my husband we always say, Shade, when is going to be our turn? Everybody, the whole world will know about it. And that's a power of testimony. So it doesn't matter what you are going through. Do not allow that to depress you. See it as God is working. Whenever you see the thing, say, ah, God is working. Whenever the thing is coming and it's like, you say, God is working. It doesn't matter what I go through. It doesn't matter what I see. One thing I know is that God is working. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, ma'am. So true. God is forever working for our good. He never sleeps. He never slumbers always wanting to give us because the bible says he delights in the prosperity of his own children so what what is it that god is going to gain from all suffering the moment there's a challenge just know it's because god wants to carry us through so we have a testimony praise the lord i just want to fill in a couple of things as uh, as Shadi was talking you know when we talk about that culture I'm sure the emphasis there is let it be scripturally based. Yeah, she said let that. Let it be biblically based. Yeah. Because there are so many things in our culture, like in Igbo land, we talk of Osu. So if you want to say culture, you invite that. Osu means outcast. There are certain group of people you cannot marry from. Some people tell you, oh, this certain period of time, they say culture, New Year festival, you can't go, you send your money. So. I think I needed to clear that so that, because I understand what she, where she was coming from, that whatever culture we're going to imbibe, inculcate, let us sift those things that are spiritually, morally based, and inculcate it in our children. Yeah. Thank you. She, yeah, she mentioned it. She said by Blake, we have to take whatever aligns with the word of God. Even in this place where we are, 
they have their culture. They are, you know, when you see solid Christian families amongst them, you know that they have values too. It's just that the enemy has done a lot of work uh, because we are lax in not sharing the testimony of Christ. That's why we are where, uh, where we are today. If every one of us keeps sharing the testimony of Christ, things will be better. And the Lord will enable us in Jesus' name. Now, lastly, what, the last thing I want us to look at in that Psalm 78 is verse 9 to 11. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bones, turned back in the day of battle. Why? They kept not the covenant of God, refused to walk in his law, forgot his works and his wonders that he has showed them. Anyone who, you know, deliberately put aside the greatness of God by not sharing who Christ is and all that he has done for him or her is going to be turned, is going to turn back in defeat. They turn back in defeat in the battle because they refuse to acknowledge or proclaim the victory that God had given them in time past. That's very, very important for us. If at any point, remember that Testimonies are born out of challenges a lot of times. Testimonies are born out of challenges. If at any point in time we begin to magnify the challenge beyond the ability of God to give us victory, we are going to be overcome by the challenge. But if even in the face of the challenge, all that we are doing is proclaiming the greatness of the Lord, remembering and recounting all that he had done in time past, then we are sure going to win. Praise the Lord. So anybody who wants to be victorious in life will take seriously obedience to the laws of the Lord and not forgetting his works and his wonders that he had showed in time past. Praise the Lord. There's another scripture I want us to quickly look at, Psalm 44, verse 1 to 3. I love this scripture. He says, we have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou did in their days, in the times of old. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand and planted them. And how thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor unto them. It just summarizes all that um, Sister Blake said before, and uh, uh, Ansela Bake, that we don't get nothing done by our power. These people began to recount to the Lord that our fathers told us what you did in time past. We want a repeat, and God showed up. And God showed up. He never fails. Imagine earthly kings, when you go to them and you begin to praise them, you did this, you did that, you did. they are going to bless you. How much more our pure and holy God. When we recount all that he has done in time past, we are definitely going to experience him even in greater dimensions in the name of Jesus Christ. Last scripture we're going to look at is Revelations 12:11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. We see that clearly displayed in the life of David, standing before Goliath. All he did was recount how the Lord gave him victory over the lion, over the bear, and addressed Goliath straight away that, I'm going to cut off your head today, I'll give it to the fowls of the air to eat. And that's exactly what happened. He, he, he recounted the power of God, what God had done in his testimonies, and he gave him victory. So, tonight, I just want us to know, I mean, amongst other things that we have shared before, that recounting the testimonies of God gives us continuous victory. Continuous victory. If something has happened to you negatively before and God gave you victory, if it rears up again, don't begin to cry and say, oh God, why again, again? No. Instead of crying that it's a repeat, thank God that this is another opportunity for a bigger testimony 
And that's exactly what will happen in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us be encouraged. Let us become bold in the face of challenges, no matter what they are. Even if it's not happened to you before you've heard how it happened to somebody else. And let's declare it to the shame of the enemy and to the victory of our God. Amen. So, um, if we have more on the power of testimony, if you have any more that you want to add, please go ahead and add, and then I'll run my slides and we pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So last week, Pastor mentioned that when you hear testimony of people, it dwarfs your own problem. problem, something like that. So I remember Dr. Ni Bubire, the pastor that came on Sunday, Sunday mm. and while he told the story, <laughs> It's it draft to my own story. In fact, in my house too. Yes. <laughs> and you know, as we were talking about the fact that parents should tell their children what God has done, something that came to my mind is parent has a lot of influence on their children. Uh, I'm a young parent, but I think I'm beginning to realize that. I was talking to my boss in the office today, and we got to talking to one level where I said, up to today, if I don't shave my beard, I can't call my dad. I cannot. At least not on video, right? Because you will use about five minutes to tell me why you look wild. You could be held by the police. I mean, that's not to say people that keep their bells to look bad. But, I mean, you would think that at this age, I would be like, you can't deal with it. I mean, you, but no. So there is a lot of influence parents have. And there are also people that are not necessarily our fathers, but have such influences in our lives. Mm -hmm. And what they tell us has a lot to do with how we see life. And so if they are not the right set of people that tells us wrong things, it can affect us negatively. If they tell us good things, it can affect us positively. And one quick testimony. My brother, who is in Maryland, he moved to the U.S. 2006. On visa lottery. We were living then in one uncompleted building in Ikorodu, Lagos. And from there, one short story, I was the only one working as a teenager, by the way. And then he would say, hey, don't let us cook with stove and use money. We'll go into the bush, we'll just finish NYC. We'll go into the bush, we'll cook with uh, wood. And that's what we we'll eat. And that was how it from there, he would go to different prayer mountains. Then he got his visa lottery came. Ten years later, in 2016, I was to come as a student. And then I got the tuition of my school. It was $13,500 every semester. And I sent it to him. And there was only one thing he said. He said, if God is leading you, come. The person that was like my uncle then in Lagos that I was living with said, that is his way of telling you I'm not responsible. <laughs> that was exactly what he said. Eventually, he sent me a statement of account that I took to the embassy. I later got to know that the money he had in the statement of account was borrowed. Because when I got here, my first installment in school was $3,500. He paid from his credit card. If you have $100,000 in your statement of account, you won't pay with credit card. Mm -hmm. Not only that, when I want to pay the second installment, I need to get a loan, and I need somebody to co-sign. Of course, he gave his name, but when they run the credit, he didn't qualify. <laughs> but seven and a half years down the line, we are here we are today, looking back and giving thanks to God. Amen. Okay? So, I, I hold on to what he said. If God is leading you, the same God who led me in 2006 from that uncompleted building, 10 years later you are coming, God has sustained me, can also sustain you. And that has really, really helped. Praise Amen. The Lord. Hallelujah. See how great it is to pass on the doings of the Lord. He shapes the, the, the generation ahead. Go ahead, man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come here. 
what did you learn? And so we sat down and he spoke about the Tanonomi 26 8 that they talk about the mighty hand of the Lord. So we opened the Bible. So after we read, I said, okay, let's bring it to our time. What can you tell me about this verse? The mighty hand of the Lord. You know, and he begin to how he can deliver, how he can do you, you know, he, he said so many amazing things like he said, okay, the money is not wasted. You've, got, <laughs> you've, you've gone to learn something. But even after I have to go back to that. I've read the Tononomi before, but I have to go back to that chapter 26 and begin to meditate about the, you know, the hand of the Lord. So what I'm saying is, it's strengthening. It's strengthening. Then as a parent, I don't, so, so, so we don't let the children think that we just got things just, just like that. So we pray together like this is what we need in this house we need fridge our fridge is old so everybody lets and they've learned it because we rotate prayers if i pray this today you we pray everybody we take turns and so they, they've learned how to father please as as we're believing you for this please do it for us because they know we have to wait on the lord you, you don't just the fact that you're a believer doesn't mean that you cannot, you know, be looking to That's God for right. one thing or the other. But we let them know that it's not that money just come in or the things we have is just by power, like Sister Labaka said, it's by the power of God. And the culture that Pastor Shadi talked about, in my house, we don't do Halloween. We do not. Right when they went kindergarten. When we're in Minneapolis, they will come and be ringing bells from one house to another. So we turn off our light. And when they are going to school, they make them to dress up. So they dress up. I told them, Halloween is a celebration of witchcraft. We are believers in this house. And that stuck with them. So when they know your, your value too, as a spiritual family, they, they stick to it. And at the end of the day, it, it gives peace of mind wherever yeah. they are. Thank you very much. Multiplies peace. Multiplies uh, faith. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, just to focus on what Sister just said. You see, it's so... Please, can you go closer to the microphone? Yeah, like she just said rightly. Um, the word of God said in Revelation 12, 11, that he overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony and the faith of their lives unto them. Now, um, we have children and we are scared to tell them about the things of God. How can they overcome out there? If they don't have words to share, about the works of God and what he has done. They cannot pass it on to their generation, like she rightly said. Secondly, I remember like a few years, three years down the lane, I had a lot of challenges back home, lost my parents and everything. And when it was time to go for the burial, I couldn't go for my dad because of the COVID. But my mom, it was a lot. I couldn't go when she was sick. When she died, I was hearing a lot of prophecies. This, that. My son, he was eight then. One day said to me, Mom, were you always telling me about the things your parents did? How you came from a good home where they prayed and everything. And why are people telling you you can't take us home? Something is going to happen to us. You always tell me I'm from Ubu State. My dad is from here and he has always prayed. So if that be the case, why are you scared to take us home? And that built my faith. I was so scared because they, there was a lot of stories. They are going to kidnap them. They've not been home. Mosquito bite. I didn't give them any antibiotics. So we just we took them to the doctor. They gave them anti-malaria and things. And they were fine. 
When we were coming back, they were scared to return because they have heard so much from me. I will tell them so much. There are some times we meet with adults and he says, hi. I said, no. I will always tell him, you are from Nigeria. You are from Ubu State. You are a Yoruba boy. Don't say hi to an adult. Where you come from, they do ballet. Greets. They prostrate. They prostrate. I will explain. I will show him. So it goes a long way. We should, we should be proud of our values. Our culture is rich. Amen. Yeah. The, if you go to Brazil, you go to UK, my brother is in UK, and sometimes he will send some video clips to me, and you'll be amazed how they are imbibing our culture, and yet we are shying away from it. If we don't teach them, they won't know. Thank you very much. We should always take what is godly out of the culture. What is godly? Amen. So we will quickly take uh, a few uh, things that I have written down. I think we've already mentioned majority of them, and then we'll take the online comments quickly, and we'll have Pastor round up for us. So I'm going to slide 14. It says, testimonies opens doors for a person to sit with the high and mighty. Look at this, um, the doctor that came on Sunday. His background wanted to limit him. But by the time God began to do mighty things in his life, look at the caliber of people that he's relating with. Even if you look at yourself. I used to tell my husband that when um, people like Daddy Lori come and you go and visit Daddy Lori, if you're in Nigeria, how will you see Daddy Lori? <laughs> you will not be able to see him because he's high up there. It's just like you want to go and see Jill. But because God has, you know, given you a testimony, brought you over here. Now when they come, because we are not very many, uh, you have opportunity to go and see Daddy Lori, praise the Lord, and other people like that. But even for the um, apostles here, they sat with the judges and confronted them, you know, because they were bold. Because they had seen Jesus in action. So they were not intimidated by their uh, pedigree at all. They, 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 they stood for the testimony of Christ and they prevailed. Uh, testimonies fortify and embolden believers. Testimonies give birth to more testimonies. Testimonies multiplies the miracle of God's power. Testimonies enable us to live the supernatural life here on earth. Testimonies enable us to live the supernatural life here on earth. We are the ones that when something is going on, we call upon the name of Jesus. And you will see changes. Sometimes, instant changes. This testimony happened to me like three, four, five months ago. I began to see that my body was behaving old. I'm saying, seriously. And I said to God, I didn't, I said, Lord, I'm getting older, yes. But my body cannot be doing this. Please, I need a change. Honestly, in that aspect, instant, from that day till today, I never that, had that experience. I never had that experience. Praise the Lord. So it's good we live the supernatural life here, whereby we call upon the Lord and he answers us and we see it manifest. Praise the Lord. Um... All right, I think we've, we've done, another thing that we didn't mention possibly is that testimonies give birth to revivals. Testimonies give birth to revivals. I'm sure a lot of people after hearing uh, Isaac's testimony, after hearing even that man's testimony on Sunday, maybe after hearing your testimony, hearing my testimony, they are revived. They want to go. Some people are so pressured by their challenge that they have almost given up on God. But when they hear a testimony, there's revival. Even in a nation, praise the Lord. Testimonies show the authenticity and undeniable, uh, the undeniability of our experiences with God. Testimonies are born out of our experience with God. It cannot be denied. You can preach to somebody and they say, hey, were you there in the days of Jesus? But when you say, this happened to me. If they like, they believe, they like, they don't believe. But it cannot be denied. Praise the Lord. Testimonies also from that scripture can act as our insurance against defeat in battles. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us to continually relish in the power of testimonies. Never stop to give testimonies. 
There are some funny reasons why we don't give testimonies. We must not succumb to it. Some people say, I want to wait for my testimony to be perfect. Some say it is not big enough to share. They look at what God has done and say it's little. Some say it's too personal. I don't want people to know that I had uh, this disease or that disease. Some are afraid of what people will say. Some want to protect their image. A whole big you. And you now had this thing and you were afraid. May the Lord have mercy on us in Jesus' name. There's no reason why we shouldn't share the greatness of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's take our comments uh, quickly. Comments from comment one. Some grace runs in a family. Sharing our testimonies with our children is how we help them build the faith to tap into the grace. If God did it for my parents, God can do it for me too. Amen. Thinking about Isaac, the faith he had in God was built early and it was a deep faith. Isaac witnessed the provision of God for Abraham at Mount Moriah. Isaac knew the God of his father closely. Yes. Isaac experienced the testimony of Abraham. Testimony sharing is a stimulant to our faith. Yes. Although it is important to share testimony, we must be careful not to share or give the glory that is due to God Almighty to any man. Yes. We must always, always direct. Don't even give it to yourself. Sometimes when we are sharing testimony, we go, I fasted 40 days and 40 nights. I did this, I did that. If God doesn't want to answer, if you fast 100 days, he won't answer. He only answered because he decided to answer. That's not to say we shouldn't fast. But please, when we are sharing what God has done, it's not, because of, it's not only because of what you did. Praise the Lord. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, not by the blood of man. All glory must be ascribed to God and God alone. Amen. Psalm 40 verse 10. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. We should not. We must also be deliberate to teach our children the act of gratitude. Yes. Thanksgiving, praise and appreciation to God. Be deliberately deliberate to teach the children to learn to say Thank you, Jesus. We see that in verse 4 of Psalm 78. The Lord will help us to continually share our testimonies and continually enjoy the power in testimony in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Glory be to God. Well, I'm sure you just clap for Pastor Roti. So why don't you clap for Jesus? Hallelujah. Well, the Lord has, um, again, uh, just as a reminder, requested that we give 18 hours of continuous testimony in the course of the church anniversary. Next Tuesday, who knows the date of next Tuesday? That's 23rd. Now, April 23rd is the anniversary is the birthday of the church if you want to clap go ahead and clap now it will not be a good way of saying thank you to jesus if those who do virtual church on tuesdays do so next tuesday that would be wrong on your own birthday you get people together on your children's birthday you bring people together it's going to be the church birthday next Tuesday. I will want to encourage us, if it's possible at all, um, to close early at work or whatever keeps you away from church on Tuesdays. Don't let it keep you away next Tuesday. Uh, we'll have started 18 hours, I believe, of testimony virtually from midnight uh, Monday into that Tuesday. And then we will wrap it up the last 30 minutes there, and then we go into uh, musical uh, worship and all of that in the, for the crown music. So I want to say that if you are, except of course those who live <laughs> far away, you are in Dallas or Canada or United Kingdom or Nigeria, you cannot possibly be here next Tuesday. But you are living in Conroe, it's one hour or something. 
Brookshire, Richmond, or somewhere. Make it, if you make it a point of duty, that, ah, this is church birthday. The church that God has brought me to serve and to, ah, I must be there on the birthday. You will be here. But if you have conditioned your mind that, no, 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 I go to church only on Sunday physical, then you won't be here. So I want to encourage you, next Tuesday is the birthday of the church. One way to thank God is to be here that, that Tuesday. Now, the anniversary, pre-anniversary begins, I believe, uh, from this Saturday. Or Friday, right? From Friday, I meant to say. All right, so let's come. Now, all the houses, they have given us all the things we need to do. Let's bring all the reps from our houses on Friday. Now, the only correction is for Saturday. Saturday will not start at 10. It's going to start at 12 noon. It will not be 10. I've asked them to modify the flyer. We still want people to wake up in their houses, take care of children, get things ready. Uh, 10, I think, is too early. Uh, by 12 noon is when we will start on Saturday. All right? Um, what else do I need to say? As we are sharing that testimony, I remember like yesterday. I mean, Victor is a grown-up boy now. The doctor drew for you, you know, the position of the womb and drew the position of the fibroid and where the baby is and what will happen to the baby. You know, it's amazing when the enemy wants to crush your faith. He will paint the picture. And so, I mean, he showed it to me. I mean, Victor is now, I don't know how old Victor is now. It, it looks like this is a very, very bad case. But one of the smartest boys that I've come across is, is Victor. But the doctor said, you know, this is... So I don't know what the enemy is telling you now. Now, this, the testimonies he shared tonight should encourage you because... Very well. And I said that to say to someone, maybe the doctor had given you a very bad case. No. If God has done it for somebody, he can do it for you too. It may not be in childbearing, it may be something else. Let's hold on to God. I think that's all we have time to share tonight. Let's rise, we give our offering, and then we'll be on our way. Glory be to God. Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord. Captains, everybody belonging to all of our cell group, let's come out MS on Friday so that we get the pre um, anniversary going. And of course, Saturday is not 10 o'clock, it's 12 noon. And then, of course, we are back here on Sunday. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for helping us tonight again. Please be glorified in Jesus' name. Multiply our testimonies. Everyone that still need to record their testimony and send in, let these ministrations impact them, motivate them to do so in the name of Jesus. And we, as we share several of these testimonies, let testimony be multiplied in our midst, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Bless our offerings. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And I look at your neighbor and say, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord.
forever and ever. Amen. See you on Friday. Something massive is about to happen. Coming from KT, Texas to you all and your families all over the world. The Redeemed Christian Church of God of the King's Palace, KT, Texas is 18. We invite you and your